Good morning, everyone. My name is Maricel Hernandez, M-A-R-I-S-E-L-H-E-R-N-A-N-D-E-Z. I'm the chairwoman of the Chicago Board of Election Commissioners, and we're delighted to have with us today our Cook County Clerk, Karen Yarbrough, our colleague who now manages all of the elections in suburban Cook County. Welcome, and thank you for joining us, Karen. My pleasure. First off, thank you all for joining us today. This is our new Loop Super Site for early voting and registration for Chicago voters at Clark and Lake, 191 North Clark Street. The Loop Super Site will be open Monday through Saturday from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. and Sundays from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. On March 2nd, we'll expand early voting out to the 50 wards. Today, we're announcing the start of early voting. We're also here to talk about our new voting equipment Chicago and suburban Cook County voters will be seeing when they come to vote. Our new generation of voting equipment has several advantages. Most, important, most importantly, the new system is more secure, more accurate, and the elections will continue to be based on the gold standard for security which is a paper record for every single ballot cast. First, we want to introduce our new touch screens. As you can see, the screens are much larger. The screens also have the advantage of newer LCD technology, which makes them far more precise. The reason that we must use touch screens in early voting is that the touch screens have the capacity to provide each voter with their particular ballot style. In Chicago, we have 2,069 precincts. Each of those precincts may potentially have their own particular ballot style. For this primary, we have 1,100 different ballot styles for voters throughout Chicago, depending on where the voter lives. So if you live in the 40, 41st Ward on the far northwest side of Chicago, or if you live in the 4th Ward in Hyde Park on the south side of Chicago, and come to vote at this super site, you will be able to access your individualized ballot on the touch screen. There is no way we can maintain 1,100 different ballot styles on paper multiplied by the number of voters in each precinct and ward at every early voting site. This is why these touch screens are so indispensable during early voting. These touch screens also offer accessibility features for different physical abilities, as well as language assistance in Spanish, Chinese, Hindi, Korean, and Tagalog. And unlike the old touch screens, these touch screens produce a paper record the voter can touch and inspect before it's fed into the scanner. When the voter feeds the paper record into the scanner, the scanner also takes an image of this ballot while also processing the votes from that ballot. The big difference between the old equipment and this new one is that after the voter makes their selections on the touch screen, they will print out the ballot. So we have Jim making selections and uh, on, on the touch screen. And we're using orange uh, ballots, and these are purely sample, the regular ballots will be white. Um, in addition, we have uh, no protective screen around uh, this particular uh, a, uh, ballot, um, touch screen, um, but we, every uh, touch screen will be in, uh, encased within uh, a, a blue uh, privacy screen, screen, privacy screen uh, for the uh, integrity of the vote. So I'm at the review stage. You can hit scroll down to see all of your selections. Notice in this contest, I did not make three selections that I could have. 
such as you could with the Metropolitan Water Reclamation District. So I can go back and correct that mistake if I want. Or I can just continue without changing anything. Go back to the review. And now it says the ballot, is, all of my selections have been made. Once I'm done reviewing it, printing the ballot. I can inspect my selections. Once I've confirmed it has all my selections, use a privacy screen. And there afterwards the voter will uh, proceed to the scanner to cast the ballot. So the judge initials the top of it. If I want to turn it upside down, paper ballot when it's issued this is a demonstration ballot again this your actual ballot will be white uh, with then green at the top for a Democratic yellow for a Republican and here I've properly marked everything it's already issued by the judge so it comes initial oh I'm sorry I'll have a much larger privacy screen both this in a booth and look at my selections, place it in the privacy screen. And lastly, this is one that's improperly marked, if you will. I overvoted it and then I saw my mistake. So I crossed out two of them where I could vote for three candidates and wrote no next to the ones I was crossing out and yes next to the ones that I intended to vote. So this is going to, should flag in the system as an overvoted ballot. But thanks to the scanning technology, I can let it go this way and it will be caught during the adjudication process after the election and they'll examine that to determine the voters intent. So it'll issue a warning that this is overvoted but I can let it override and just cast it that way. Just to be clear, that was if you opted out of the touch screen? No, that was on election day when we have paper ballots because in the precinct you only have one or two ballot styles. So you can have paper ballots. Here, it's all touch screen so that we have all 1,100 ballot stems. Next, um, our voters who vote by mail will be using a paper ballot. The only difference here is that previously, the voters used to connect the tail and the head of an arrow next to the candidate's name. Now, instead, the voters will be filling in an oval next to the candidate's name, much like a standardized test. Again, the vote by mail ballots will be processed through scanners at our headquarters, which uses the same technology as the ballot scanners here. Lastly, on election day in the precinct polling places, there will be both paper ballots and the touch screen to assist any voter who needs language assistance 
or accessibility. The reason we can use paper ballots in precinct polling places on Election Day is that the precinct usually has just one or very few different types of, of ballot uh, styles for that neighborhood. And we can accommodate paper ballots for these few precincts for the voters who live there. As I previously stated, each early voting site needs to offer more than 1,100 varieties of ballots for voters based on each neighborhood's combination of districts for war, judicial, state, and federal offices. And now uh, I'll pass it along to uh, Karen Yarbrough. Good morning, I'm Karen Yarbrough. I'm the Cook County Clerk and really excited about today and excited about our uh, kicking off our elections. And thank you, Chairwoman Marcel, for sharing your new Loop Early Voting Super site. Just when you walk in this place, you just want to vote, don't you? I yeah, I just Great. felt like I just wanted to vote. So um, this election year is among the most important of our lifetime. I know, I know you hear that all the time, but it really is. And as no one candidate seems to be running away from the pack for the Democratic nomination for president, our Illinois primary could be of more importance than in recent memory. So all eyes on March 17th. There will be a lot of information coming at voters, though. And some of it is going to be from legitimate sources and other from trusted news sources, like those who are with us here today. But there's going to be a lot of information out there that on the internet and other places that will not be. And so we're focusing our attention on telling people they need to focus on trusted sources. Now you hear about all this fake news and I'm on the internet quite often and I look at Facebook and some of these other things and just try for myself to see what's real and what's not. And there's a lot of garbage out there. So now we plan to protect and defend our election systems in suburban Cook, as we always do. But voters also have to be vigilant. Some of the people who would try to interfere with our election network also would try to create confusion, apathy, division by targeting voters with bad information. It's kind of like that old Chicago adage, even if your mother tells you something's wrong with the election in your polling place, you need to check it out. If someone tells you your polling place is closed or the election has been moved to Thursday, verify it with my office. If you're a suburban Cook County voter with the city elections board, or if you're a Chicago voter, your mom or Aunt Betty or some friend they may be honest people, but they may not, and they don't intend to lead you astray. However, they may not have the right information. Trust your trusted sources. Now, the Secretary of State has a new initiative, and it's called Trusted Info 2020, that drives voters directly to the official elections website and social media pages to ensure that voters get the right information. And if we truly want to ensure that we have a great election on March 17th, you can become election judge, all of you. We need more judges. Election judges can make at least $200 a day. And as first time, they'll be actually polling places both for city and suburban residents inside the Cook County Jail. This is a first. And we need election judges to work there. Both Voters that are interested in being election judges can go to cookcounty.com slash judges to apply. So with that, I'd be happy to answer any questions. <laughs>